Greetings! Welcome to Electronics 2. This is lecture number 14 and I am Bezad Rozavi. Today we will uh, look at the mass differential pair from a small signal point of view and uh, follow pretty much what we did for the differential, differ for the bipolar differential pair and uh, derive the small signal uh, voltage gain of the circuit. Uh, so the development is very similar to what we did before and uh, we don't have to go through all of the details that we did but still to just refresh our memory we'll look at some of the details that are necessary all right but before we go there i would like to uh, review what we covered in lecture number 13. Uh, there we spent some time on the large signal input output characteristic of the circuit and we saw that uh, we generally have this shape as we did for the bipolar differential pair as well except that the equation describing this behavior is different. And uh, then uh, we saw that uh, uh, the, the circuit can actually amplify around here because this slope can be chosen to be anything we want. We found the slope to be given by something like this, uh, minus Rd, and then square root of mu n C ox W over L times the tail current. So we played with these values, we played with ISS, with W over L, and saw how this characteristic changes when we change these things, which are the parameters that are under our control as circuit designers. Okay, and uh, we also discovered that uh, this characteristic uh, begins to saturate at an input differential voltage equal to this value. Because what happens is that at this voltage, the difference between these two is sufficient to allow all of the current to go to one side and turn off the transistor on the other side. So once, once this transistor turns off, there is no activity in the circuit. There's no gain in the circuit. The circuit is almost dead. So uh, we consider the, uh, this characteristic from here on and from here on to have a zero slope, so there is no gain in the circuit. Okay. Now today we will uh, uh, first uh, uh, look at some applications of all the circuits that we have seen so far. The cascode, the current meter, and the differential pair. Just to have a, an appreciation for the widespread use of these circuits today. And then we will go on to the small signal analysis of the mass differential pair. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at the next slide. This is the cover of the Digest of Technical Papers for our premier conference, the International Solid State Circuit Conference, ISSCC. This conference is pretty large. We have about 3,000, 3,500 people attending it every year. And this is where the latest and greatest developments in integrated circuits are presented. So this is from this year, 2018. And, uh, I want to show you some papers. I just uh, reached in there, I opened the digest and looked at some papers. And just randomly, I came across these circuits that should look familiar to us. So here's a paper. Uh, this paper is from uh, Broadcom. And it's uh, some RF transceiver. But we don't go through the details. I just wanted to show you that you can see there's a cascode structure right here. So they are using a cascode. There's another cascode here, and there's another cascode here, and there's another cascode here. You see that this cascode has significant impact on the performance of the circuit. The circuit is called a low noise amplifier, LNA. And again, we're not interested in the details, but I just, I just wanted to show you that uh, this uh, topology that we studied does have some nice applications. Okay, let's go to another paper from the same year. This paper is uh, from Georgia Tech, and it also has to do with an RF transceiver. And again, you can see a cascode here and a cascode here. So uh, this is also a low noise amplifier, and you can see that they have two cascodes. There's something going on between these two. It's a transmission line, but again, we don't worry about it here. Okay, so carrying on to other papers, we see this paper uh, from Peking University, 
in China. It's a PAM4 transceiver. Again, we don't know what PAM4 means and that's okay. But I wanted to show you uh, the differential pairs that they're using. You see, this is a PMOS differential pair. This is an NMOS differential pair with a current source, well, the clock. This is another differential pair. This is another differential pair, right? So we have differential pairs everywhere because they are very nice and robust uh, circuits. Okay, uh, the next paper is shown here. This is uh, from Fudan University and University of Washington. Uh, it's about wireless power and data transfer. And again, you can see a differential pair here, a current meter here, and another differential pair. This is a PMOS differential pair, and another current meter here. So these are things that we've been looking at in the past uh, lectures, and they are still used uh, widely everywhere. Okay, so I hope this shows you that the circuits that we are studying here are not just out of academic interest, but really because they have a uh, great application everywhere in today's technology. And uh, so that's why we want to understand uh, their detailed operation. So now let's go and look at the small signal behavior. Uh, small signal behavior of uh, the MOS a differential pair. Okay, and I just need to <clears throat> build up the foundation for that. Uh, so let's change the color to maybe blue. All right, so just a few points before we go there. A few points. Okay, so what we know is that if I have a MOSFET in saturation and uh, I apply a voltage to the gate and source, that's how it's in saturation, um, and then I make a small change of delta V in this voltage difference, then the current will also experience the change of delta I, and what we know is that delta I over delta V is GM. That's the definition of GM, right? That's the transconductance of this MOSFET under these bias conditions. Okay, so what comes out of this is that if I'm interested in the voltage change necessary to create a current change, then delta V will be given by delta I over GM. So in some cases we have delta V, we're looking for delta I, and in some cases, we have delta I, we are looking for delta V. All right, so that's one point that we need to know. And from here, we can also develop the small signal model of the MOSFET. So if you remember from electronics one, it's uh, just this. So this is the source terminal. This is the gate terminal. This is the drain terminal. We call this small signal voltage V1, and this current source will be GMV1. If we have channel length modulation, then we will also have a resistor from here to the source called RO. But for now, we don't worry about it. Okay, all right, so that's one. Uh, the next observation uh, that we need to uh, look at is just a differential pair <coughs> where we apply a small differential change to the input. So again, this is something that we did in, uh, uh, in previous lectures for the bipolar differential pair. So we assume that V in 1 goes up by delta V and V in 2 goes down by delta V, so that's V in 2, this is RD, and this is RD, okay, and X and Y. Okay, so again, V in 1 and V in 2 are at the same potential initially, and then one goes up by delta V, one goes down by delta V, all right, so that's what we have. Okay, well, 
Now, we know that uh, we can write from uh, the previous slide I showed you, because these are small values, we can write Vx minus Vy. V minus V into is small, right? So we are near the origin of the overall input-output characteristic. So I can write uh, this is equal to minus Rd, square root of mu n c ox w over l i s s and then v in 1 minus v in 2 right we saw that just a few moments ago okay so we have this and what we know is that v in 1 minus v in 2 was 0 now it is equal to del 2 delta v so we'll just plug that in here and we have minus rd square root of mu n c ox w over l iss and then 2 delta v okay so where am i going with this calculation well remember we started with something similar in the case of the bipolar differential pair. We started from the output nodes and we sort of worked our way back to this node. And we proved that if these two voltage changes are differential, meaning in opposite directions and by equal amounts, and small, then this voltage was constant for the bipolar differential pair. So we want to prove the same thing for the mass differential pair because we saw that that was very useful for finding the small signal gain of the circuit okay all right so if uh, vx minus vy is like this can i find id1 minus id2 sure i know that vx minus vy is equal to minus rd times id1 minus id2 as we saw previous times all right so then i just equate this to this and what i have is id1 minus id2 is equal to square root of mu n c ox w over l i s s 2 delta V okay all right so that's fine uh, we have proved that if we create a small change of 2 delta V between the two inputs then these two currents will start from being equal and will develop an imbalance equal to this value right so okay but I also know that ID1 plus ID2 is equal to ISS right that's a KCL at node P so that's called ISS okay so now I can find for example just ID1 from here right so we see that ID1 is equal to ISS over 2 plus square root of mu n c ox W over L delta V. All right, that factor of two drops because I get two uh, ID1 here. So that's the amount of uh, change that I see in ID1, right? This is the change that we see. So this is change in ID1. Before we created this input perturbation, when these two were equal, each side carried ISS over 2. Now, this side carries ISS over 2 plus this. So, what we have is, uh, this is the change. Okay, so now, I have a MOSFET. It's in saturation. And it has experienced a change in this drain current equal to this. So, how much is the change in the gate source voltage of the transistor? Right here. So the gate source voltage has to change by an amount equal to delta I over Gm. Okay, so I will change, I will write here VGS1 
changes by this current change divided by GM, GM of transistor M1. So let's give these numbers, M1 and M2. So it changes by the current change, which is square root of mu n c ox w over l iss times uh, delta v divided by gm, gm1. Is that okay? All right. Okay, so how much is gm1? Well, here's a transistor. Uh, that has a bias current of ISS over 2, right, before we apply the perturbation. Uh, so for a MOS transistor in saturation, we, can, we have an equation for a GM, right? We have three equations, so one of the equations is this. So one equation is square root of 2 mu n C ox W over L ID. And ID is how much? ISS over 2. So this, these will give us ISS, which happens to be the, the same as this. So this is actually GM1, and it's not surprising, right? So this whole thing is actually delta V. So let me change the color and make sure that I mark that so that you will remember. So, so this is GM1, right? This is GM1. It's the same thing as this. All right. Okay. So the beauty of this is that we have proved that the gate source voltage of M1 has increased by delta V when we raise the gate of M1 by delta V. All right. So this has gone up by delta V. This VGS has gone up by delta V. So VP does not change, right? This is constant. This goes up by delta V. Therefore, this with respect to ground goes up by delta V. Therefore, VP with respect to ground does not change. Okay, so we say that VP does not change, doesn't change. So P is AC ground, right, for small signal analysis. Just the way we had it for the bipolar differential pair. Okay, so now that we have this, we can go ahead and look at the small signal uh, model of the circuit. So small signal operation. And that means that I can draw the differential pair again. But this time I simply allow this tail node to be AC ground, right? Because we are interested in the small signal behavior of the circuit. So now anything I write here is a small signal quantity. So V in 1, V in 2, and X and Y are all small signal voltages, meaning change in voltages. And this is RD, this is RD. So, and this would be really a small a, AC ground, right? <clears throat> so, now, again, the circuit has been reduced to two halves, and that means that I can just worry about one half, right? So this is a half circuit. And for this half circuit, which is just a simple common source stage, the signal goes to the gate, the source is grounded, and the signal comes out of the drain. So I can just say that the voltage gain Vx over V in 1 is equal to minus Gm Rd. Gm of this transistor times Rd, as we saw in electronics 1. Okay, uh, we also saw before when we analyzed the bipolar differential pair uh, that the differential voltage gain of the circuit is equal to the voltage gain of one half of the circuit. So I can right away write the differential voltage gain. So that means that Vx minus Vy, this is the differential output voltage, divided by 
V in 1 minus V in 2. That's the differential input voltage. That ratio is the gain, and that gain is the same as this uh, half circuit gain, so minus GMRD. So uh, it's uh, very important, very useful to remember that these two gains are the same. And if you go back to the previous slides, you, previous uh, lectures, you will remember how we proved that. All right, so that is the uh, differential voltage gain of a circuit. It's very simple, right? So again, anytime we can identify a line of symmetry through the circuit, we can ground all of the nodes on that line of symmetry, and then a very complex differential circuit can be broken up into two simple or simpler half circuits. And then for each of those half circuits, we can find the gain, and then that gain is the same as the differential gain of the overall circuit. So this is uh, very similar to what we did for bipolar differential pairs, and now we can go ahead and look at some examples. Okay, so let's go look at an example just to uh, flex our muscles with these ideas. Here we go with a, an example. <coughs> Okay, uh, so let's take a differential pair and assume that there is a resistor here. There are two resistors in the sources. So we have source degeneration for these transistors. ISS, RS, RS, and then V in 1, V in 2. Rd, Rd, X, and Y. So our objective is to find the differential voltage gain of the circuit. Okay, so again, the line of symmetry is here, and this point can be AC grounded. So once we AC grounded, we end up with two half circuits, right? So I'll just draw one of the half circuits. V in 1, Rd, X, Rs, right? And now this is readily recognizable. This is the uh, common source stage with the generation which we saw in electronics 1. So we know the voltage gain expression for the circuit, right? So we say that Vx over V in 1 equals minus Rd, the resistor in the drain divided by 1 over Gm plus Rs, which is the degeneration resistance. <clears throat> and we know that the differential voltage gain of the circuit is the same as the gain of this circuit, this half circuit, right? So this expression applies to the differential voltage gain of the differential pair as well. All right, so it's very simple. Okay. Let's look at another example. In this example, I have something else. So let's change the color of our pen. So this time, I decided to do something like this. Um, just a diode connected NMOS device acting as the load for the differential pair. Okay, so uh, we have replaced the load resistors, the physical resistors, with these diode connected MOSFETs. And we would like to calculate the voltage gain of the circuit. All right, okay, so let's call these M1, M2, M3, and M4, X and Y. So what do I do here? Okay, well, 
there is a line of symmetry. So I can still assume that this point is AC ground. So I draw half of the circuit, the left half, for example. So here's one half of the circuit. V in 1 goes to the gate of M1, and X is at the drain of M1, and this is M3. Now, this circuit is something that we actually saw in Electronics 1. It is a common source stage because the signal goes to the gate and comes out of the drain. The source is at AC ground. Uh, but how do I deal with this diode-connected device? Well, if you remember from Electronics 1, a diode-connected device is a two-terminal device. You see, these two are shorted. That's one terminal. And this is the other terminal. As I said, in more advanced courses, we also consider the substrate or the body effect, but here we don't worry about it. So it has only two terminals. And we saw that as far as the small signal operation is concerned, a diode-connected device is equivalent to 1 over GM3. Okay, a resistor. So for small signal operation, I can replace this with this. Okay? All right, so if that's the case, I can just go ahead and draw the rest of the circuit. V in 1, X, M1, right? And this is also AC ground. And now it's a simple common source stage. So we can readily write its voltage gain. Uh, in this case, and in this case, I'm assuming that channel length modulation is negligible. Okay, so we can say that AV is equal to minus GM of the amplifying device, the input device, GM1, times uh, the load resistor, which is 1 over GM3. 1 over GM3. So GM1 over GM3 with a negative sign, is the voltage gain of the circuit. It's the voltage gain of this half circuit. It's also the differential voltage gain of this complete differential pair. Okay, so that's pretty simple. But the point is that the notion of symmetry and the half circuit uh, is, very is very powerful, right? We can use it uh, to analyze many complex differential circuits. All right, let's uh, now go and look at another example. So suppose we have a differential pair. V in one V in 2, ISS, uh, load resistors X and Y, and I would like to take this circuit as it is with the, everything that I have chosen, some dimensions for the two transistors, values for RD, value for ISS, and I decide to double the width of the two transistors. Okay? So W goes to 2W. Everything else is the same. And the question is, what happens to AV, meaning the voltage gain? Vx minus Vy divided by V in 1 minus V in 2. What happens to that? Okay, well, we uh, derived the voltage gain of that circuit on the previous page. So let me go back for a moment. So we derived this voltage gain, right? And it was minus GMRD. Okay, so that's the equation that we know for the voltage gain of the circuit, the, the basic differential pair, a current source in the tail and two resistors, right? All right, so now we go and we say, okay, so what we know is that Generally speaking, AV is equal to minus GMRD. 
And what we are wondering is if the width of the two transistors is double, that's something that I can do as a circuit designer, then uh, what happens to the voltage gain? All right, well, no problem. We're going to write Gm equals mu n, 2 mu n, C ox, W over L, ID. ID is the bias current, which is 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 over 2. Remember, the bias current is defined as one that is present when there are no signals. So if we don't have a differential signal here, these two are equal, so the tail current is split equally on the two sides. All right, so uh, the current is ISS over two and so forth. And all we've done is we have increased this W by a factor of two. So then uh, GM goes to the square root of two times GM, which means AV goes to square root of two times AV. So the voltage gain of the circuit goes up by square root of two. And if you remember, we apply the same idea to the large signal characteristic of the differential pair last time. And we concluded the same thing. We said that the slope at the origin goes up by square root of two, right? So it's the same idea. Remember the black curve that we had last time? It had a, a higher slope at the origin by square root of two. That's what it is, it's the same thing. Okay, so that's easy. Uh, let's go to another example. And ask what happens. Um, what happens? If both W and ISS are doubled. Okay, so I had chosen a bias current, let's say one milliampere here, and some width for these transistors, let's say five microns. And then I decided that I'm going to uh, increase the width by a factor of two to 10 microns and the tail current from one milliamp to two milliamps. All right, and I would like to see what happens to the voltage gain. Okay, well, again, we go back here and we see that uh, the resistor value has not changed. So are these the same as before? But GM has experienced a factor of two here and a factor of two here. So GM itself is doubled. So we say that GM goes to 2GM, which means AV goes to 2AV. Okay, so we kept the load resist resistor constant, and, and instead we doubled the width and doubled the tail current, and that doubled the voltage gain. Alternatively, I don't have to do this, I can just double RD. If you double RD, AV also doubles. So we have these parameters to play with, right? In this circuit, ISS, W over L, and RD are under my control. And depending on the design, depending on the supply voltage, I can play with these differently to achieve a high voltage gain or uh, improve some other parameters. Okay, so that's one example. Let's go and look at another example here. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What happens if the temperature rises. Okay, so let's say you are inside the house, the temperature is 27 degrees centigrade, 300 Kelvin, and then you walk outside and it's like 50 degrees centigrade, really hot, right? So exactly what happens to the voltage gain of the circuit? All right, so uh, let's assume that RD does not change with temperature. 
That's not actually correct, but let's assume that. Okay, so Rd is constant. All right, so in this equation, Rd is constant. Let's assume that the tail current is constant. So then what changes the temperature? Not this, not this, but this. The mobility does change with the temperature. So we say the mobility goes down with temperature. Okay, so that means that the transconductance goes down with temperature, which means that AV, the absolute value of AV also goes down. So what we see is that the voltage gain of the circuit drops at high temperatures. In fact, that is one of the difficult conditions in circuit design. Circuit design at room temperature may not be that hard, let's say for a differential pair, but when it comes to uh, satisfying different environmental conditions, it becomes much harder. When we design a circuit, it has to work from, for example, minus uh, 25 degrees, maybe minus 50 degrees centigrade, all the way to maybe plus 100 degrees centigrade. So uh, you try to make the circuit, to optimize the circuit for minus 50 degrees centigrade, it will not be optimum for 100 degrees centigrade and vice versa. So covering such a broad temperature range is a difficult challenge even in today's uh, circuit design. Okay, very good. Uh, let's talk about uh, the PMOS differential pair as well. And uh, that completes our study so far. So we're gonna look at the P-type differential pair. P-type uh, uh, differential pair. All right, so uh, the differential pairs that we have seen so far use either NPN bipolar transistors or NMOS transistors. But you could say, well, why not the P-type, right? The P-type is perfectly acceptable too. Sure, so uh, if you want to use bipolar technology, we can use PNP transistors. So the emitters are connected to each other, just like the NPN. So here's NPN, here's PNP, so that we can compare. This is P, this is N. <coughs> Here we had a tail current source connected to the common emitter node right here to ground. And uh, this current source is an N-type current source. Here, the common emitter is up here. We need a current source from uh, the positive supply, so VCC. And this current source will be a P-type current source, meaning made of, for example, a PNP transistor. And again, this would be node P. These would be the load resistors going to ground, and X and Y would be here. And V in 1, and V in 2. Okay? So, again, in uh, our circuit schematics, we draw the emitters of the PMP devices on top and the collectors on the bottom because uh, the voltage that we have here is higher here than here. So in our mind, higher voltages are on top of the page and lower voltages are on the bottom of the page. That's why we draw the PMPs like this and the NPNs like this. All right, uh, every characteristic that we found before exactly satisfies for the PNP version also. Uh, it's a hyperbolic tangent for large signals. It's GM times RC for small signals. This node is considered AC ground. All the stuff that we said here applies here as well. All right, how about the, uh, the MOS version? Okay, so here's the NMOS differential pair that we have studied extensively. So we have an NMOS pair and an N-type current source, for example, an NMOS current source. So for PMOS, we have to flip everything upside down. So we have two PMOS devices sharing their sources. So this source and this source are shorted. And that becomes the tail node. And then we have a P-type current source here. 
that goes to VDD. We can call this still ISS. We call ISS strange because it doesn't go to, uh, well, it goes to sources, so we call it ISS. And then we have these inputs, and then we have resistors to ground, and then we have these outputs. And again, everything that we said here applies here as well. In terms of the large signal characteristic, as we saw before, uh, the large signal characteristic, uh, if you remember, uh, was this pretty complex uh, square root relationship, right? So it applies to here as well. This node is AC grounded. Uh, when uh, we have a small differential input, so we can break it into two half circuits, similarly here, two half circuits, and solve it quickly. And uh, uh, the, uh, if the two inputs are shorted to each other, here or here, the tail current is split equally. So the half of ISS goes this way, gets multiplied by this resistor, gives us this voltage. And the other half goes this way, gets multiplied by this resistor, gives us this voltage. All right, so those also are very similar. Okay, so uh, that's good to know. And uh, let's go over some examples of these things, just so that uh, we are comfortable. So here's a PNP differential pair. with degeneration. So we have a current source going to this node. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> going to this node. Okay, and we have two degeneration resistors. We call them RE. And we have Differential inputs, V in 1 and V in 2. We have resistors to AC to ground, RC, RC, and node X and node Y. And we would like to find the small signal differential voltage gain of the circuit. Okay, so as usual, we try to identify a line of symmetry and based on that find a virtual ground. So we see that the line of symmetry is like this and this point is considered AC ground because the DC volt the voltage at this point does not change with time. So if it's AC ground I can draw a half circuit, right? So this is AC ground, this is RE on the left hand side, we have a PNP transistor with this collector connected to a load RC. This is node X and this is V in 1. So the voltage gain of the circuit, AV, is that of a degenerated bipolar common emitter state. And it's exactly the same expression, whether it's a PNP device or NP NPN device. So it will be minus RC over 1 over GM plus RE, as we remember from electronics 1. Okay, so we see that uh, everything that we do is a repetition of what we did for the NPN differential pair, right? The results are identical. It's just that in some applications, we prefer to use the P-type. In some applications, we prefer to use the N-type. It depends on the environment in which these circuits are used. All right, uh, maybe one more example. So let's consider a PMOS differential pair. RD, RD, and uh, I put a resistor between these two points, and I will call it R1. And I would like to find the differential voltage gain. So that's still uh, Vx minus Vy divided by V in 1 minus V in 2. How do I do that? 
Well, let's try to find a line of symmetry. So we will change the color of our pen to this color. And this is line of symmetry. The line of symmetry has to go through half of R1. We saw this example before for the bipolar differential pair. So uh, I can write R1 like this, right? So R1 over 2, R1 over 2. And we know that Vx and Vy change differentially if V in 1 and V in 2 change differentially. So this point, the midpoint, will be AC grounded, as we saw before. So the circuit reduces to a half, which is like this, Rd, and this, which is R1 over 2, is x, v in 1, and if we neglect channel length modulation, we see that there are two resistors connected from x to AC ground, so they are in parallel. That's the load resistor connected to the drain of a MOS device. So the voltage gain is just given by minus Gm times Rd in parallel with R1 over 2. 